ladies and gentlemen, please give a big hand to Sarah Bishop. <laughs> You having a good time? Yeah. yeah. Who was here last year? A few of you, yeah? You might have seen Dawn Owen. She was the winner from last year. She's on a little bit later. Um, apparently, she's got a pet lesbian, which she talks about. Um, and the pet lesbian is here this evening. OK, so keep your eyes peeled. I've checked out the other contestants. I haven't got a clue which one it is. So I'm here this evening because I got last year and heckled one of the turns. Um, lovely chap called Malcolm, you can see him on YouTube. Um, and he just went on and on about how bloody miserable lesbians are. We're miserable all the time, apparently. Now, he didn't offend me, it's just that I was so happy I'd started to question my own sexuality. <laughs> so, but the, the real moral of the story is don't heckle because you could end up here next year. And it's terrifying. Okay, so anyway, I've got this dog, Bodie. And, uh, well, actually, I've got half a dog, okay? Um, I got in with my ex, and uh, for a dog, having two mummies in the house is a little bit confusing. So I was called Daddy, okay? And no, that doesn't mean I'm the man in the relationship. That is a fallacy. What it does mean is I didn't get custody. Anyway, um, dog, dog owners are generally quite friendly folk, but occasionally I encounter a little bit of dog snobbery. And that was snobbery, not snoggery. I mean, who wants to snog a dog when you see what they've been licking all day long? Although, I must admit, I am actually one of those disgusting dog owners that lets my dog lick my face. And I'm like, ooh, do you love your daddy? Do you love your daddy? And then it dawned on me the other day, he probably actually thinks that I'm just an <laughs> Dogs are always licking their ass. <laughs> anyway, Bodie is a cockapoo, which for people that don't know is a cocker spaniel crossed with um, a poodle. And um, some pedigree owners get a little bit sniffy about these designer mongrels, you see. So, but I must admit, it does lend itself to some bloody stupid names. So, if you get a, a cross between a Yorkshire ter Terrier and a York, no, and a Yorkie and a Yorkie, that doesn't work, does it? A Yorkshire Terrier and, um, oh, bugger, I've forgotten what you cross it with, and a Chihuahua. It's because they're so small, they're just a waste of skin, aren't they, really? But if you cross a, a Yorkshire Terrier uh, with a Chihuahua, you get a Chalky. Um, a Beagle with a Pug is a Puggle. This is real stuff, okay? And uh, if you cross a um, Peekapoo, no, a Pekingese with a, I've given that one away. Anyway. <laughs> Perhaps we should go on to the Bull Terrier and the Shih Tzu at this stage. <laughs> and I also know a guy who uh, crossed a Malamute with a pointer, but that's a moot point. <laughs> anyway, these people that get a bit snobby and snotty about, you know, the crossbreeds, they tend to be purebred themselves, if you get to know my drift, yeah? They're, uh, they're usually from areas with lots of people and too few surnames. <laughs> and we don't do it with cats. We don't do this design a hybrid thing with cats. And I looked it up and then I was astounded at how many different breeds of cats there are. You've got British Shorthairs, you've got Persian, Siamese, Burmese, Abyssinian, Sphinx, Ragdolls. You've got Russian, Russian Blues. I mean, th the list is endless. I was genuinely astounded. And then I started thinking to myself, well, if you cross some of them, right? If you've got a Russian Blue and you crossed it with a Ragdoll, you'd have a Russian Doll Cat, wouldn't you? And it would be quite a big cat, but if you took its head off, there'd be a smaller one inside. And then again, you'd have another one, and another one, and another one. It's like the perfect mad cat lady starter kit, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, all these, all these silly names of things brings me on to German. Slick, that, wasn't it? Really slick. My girlfriend's Austrian. She lives and works in Vienna. And somebody said to me, oh, wow, does she speak Austrian? Yes, that would be German. <laughs> Um, and she's trying to teach me a bit of German, but to be honest with you, my pronunciation's pretty shit. So, has anybody here ever tried to speak a, a second language? language? Oh, yeah. yeah? A few of you? Yeah? Oh, yeah, we went to Spanish together, didn't we? Yeah, we were shit at that as well, weren't we? <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so my pronunciation's really crap, and one of the biggest problems is that in German, they have this kind of e sound, which we really don't have in English. So I'll say these words that are supposed to have this stupid sound in it, and she goes, no, it's ooh. So I just go, oh, 
U. No, it's U, not U. Does that not just sound the same to you? And then they have these really weird words, they compound nouns. So we've got like ambulance and they have Krankenwagen, which is sick truck. Sick truck. And then even really simple words like pen. So in French, Spanish and Italian, you've got stylo, penna, pluma. German, Kugelschreiber. Which sounds like another one of those dogs, doesn't it? Anyway, it's just as well that Katia's English is so good, because obviously my German's crap, um, but occasionally she gets phrases a little bit mixed up. So a few months ago, we are in Vienna, and uh, I see this gang of mammals over the road. We all know what mammals are, do we? Middle-aged men in Lycra? <laughs> yeah? So they've got the expensive bikes, they've got the Garmin GPS, Shimano, this, that and the other. And I said to Katya, oh, in England, we call that all the gear, no idea. Yeah? She goes, ah, oh, all the gear, no idea. I love this. I love... She doesn't sound anything like that, by the way. But she said, all the gear, no idea. I love it. I love it. So a few, few weeks later, we're bobbing around in Kimber, as you do. We see a gang of, of similarly equipped mammals. And she says to me, hey, look over there. They got all the equipment, not a clue. <laughs> I've been Sarah Bishop, you've been very generous, thank you.